derivative of this function here? Lux. Let's now, do it. Who is that back there? It's this fellow Jeremy. Should we do this, all of us together? Yes, we is that going to be fun? OK. So I think that many of you out there will say, hey, I know how to do this. I've got a whole shortcut. I could rewrite this as 3x to the 1 half, take the derivative using the power rule and the chain rule. And yes, you could. And should we, to verify what our final answer should be? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. let's look at the shortcut rule first, even though okay. that's not what this video is really about. All right, so let's do the shortcut rule, and then, I, then I'll know I'm going in the right direction. So I'm going to rewrite that as 3x quantity to the 1 half. So here I go. I'm going to do the, the chain rule, basically. Right? I have a function inside all raised to the 1 half, so it's the derivative of the outside, if you will, times the derivative of that inside. And there it is. Now, I want to clean that clean up, up a little, little bit. bit. And negative exponents are fine, but let's go ahead and write it without negative exponents. So I'm going to put that in the denominator. Let's see, that's also that 2 is in the denominator, and that 3 is in the numerator. Okay, so that's what our final answer should look like using the, the limit, limit definition. definition. All right. So let's try the limit. And you know, the limit definition of the derivative, it's not for the faint of heart. The algebra gets a little complicated, but it is character building. Well said. So let's set it up. Mr. Paley, you got us set up nicely with why this thing works. So we basically know we're going to find the limit as h approaches 0. And h is that tiny little difference between my inputs. So between where I have x plus a little bit, that h, okay, and then minus the function as it is, right, with my input of x all over the difference in my x's, which is h. So far, so good? So far, so good. So always when we're working with these, we ultimately want to substitute in 0 for my h, because I want my h to basically equal 0, or get infinitely close to 0. But why can't I do this here? Who's going to arrest us, people back there? Who's going to arrest us if I put in 0 for h? The math police. So we need to do some crazy algebra. And whenever students say, well, how do I know what to do? You might not. You just try whatever you can. Try stuff. Just try stuff. There's not a whole heck of a lot I can do down there. Can I combine those? Are those like terms? No. They can, you can distribute the three. I could distribute that three. But, well, let's go ahead and do that just for fun, because I can. But, ah, it doesn't really do anywhere. much. So I'm just going to be wild and think, OK, I've got square roots. What could I do? Hey, sometimes I rationalize these things. Let me try it. Try what the heck? That's where you use conjugates? That's when I use conjugates. Heard of those. Yeah. So if you remember back in the olden days, when we were rationalizing things like that, yeah. we wanted to multiply that by something to make that a rational number. And we realized that, oh, that's going to, when you multiply that up, that's going to give you a rational number. And of course, whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top. Well, we're going to do that same thing here, but I'm going to rationalize the numerator. Why? Because it's something to try. It might work. Let's try it. All right, here we go. You might need to. Uh... Yep. So I'm going to do the conjugate of this. Since this is minus, I'm going to be adding those. Now let me do the same thing because I'm multiplying by a Basically weird that's... form of 1. Right, that's just the number 1. So you're allowed to multiply anything by 1. It doesn't change it. Okay. It'll just change the way it looks. All right, so here I go. The limit as h approaches 0. That's just a binomial times a binomial, yeah. isn't it? Okay. So let's distribute. So that first term times that first term. Well, that's a square root of 3x plus 3h times the square root of 3x plus 3h. Hey! 3x plus 3h. 3x plus 3h. I like It's that. kind of like difference of perfect square multiplication. That's right. So here we have square root of 3x plus 3h times that. Well, that's going to give me 
I get, I'm just going to write it like this. I can just multiply those together. Right. Right? And then the next one's going to basically be the same with a minus. Oh, my goodness. That's handy, isn't it? I think those things are going to just subtract each other away. Yeah. And now let's multiply those last ones together. That's going to give me negative 3x. A negative root 3x times a positive root 3x is just minus 3x. Nice. And the denominator? All right, denominator is h times that whole thing. Right. And I guess you could distribute it, but don't. Yeah, and you'll I, see you why. You could. You could. <laughs> All right. God, this is so messy. Can you even follow this? This is a little messy, but All right, yeah. let's give this a whirl. So a whole bunch of lovely things happen. Like turns. This goes away with that. This goes away with that. I'm liking this. So I basically have a 3x in the three numerator. H. 3h, yeah. Oh, sorry, a 3h, thank you. And an h times this business. Hey, can I do some dividing up to down? Is that numerator, that 3h, is that the only thing left over? That's the only thing left over. Then, yeah. So I have one term in the numerator. And, and one term. One term, one blob of things multiplied in the denominator. Right. So Those will become a one. That's that divide away. That's fine. Okay. Right. So I have Let's three see. in the numerator. What do I have in the denominator? I have the square root of 3x plus h plus the square root of 3x, and I have the limit right. as h approaches 0. Now remember, our goal is to plug in 0 for h, because then I'm going to find that instantaneous rate. And if you plugged in 0 at any of those other tricky looking steps, it still would have been divide by 0. zero so it wasn't until they canceled out, divided to 1, that now you can attempt to, to plug in that zero, I Yeah, think. let's see if it's going to work. There are no H's in the numerator. Let's see if I can go ahead and safely do this. And when you plug in, you can stop writing limit, right? That's because you've evaluated oh it. Oh, my gosh! This looks like something. I think this is going to work. Three in the numerator is safe. And I have the square root of 3x plus zero. I think we can call that just the square root of 3x. And there are plus two of them. another square root of 3x. I don't see any zeros. Do you guys see any mm -hmm. zeros in the denominator? No, good. sir, -y. And I'm going to be really fancy here and do square root of 3x plus square root of 3x. I think I have two, two of those. those puppies. I think puppy is the technical term. <laughs> now, I erased what we got with the shortcut version. Is that what we got? Let me, let me zoom I in and see. Dun, dun, dun. That is what we had. That's the derivative. Very nice. Very nice. Look at all that character building. <laughs> Sorry it was so messy, but I think you got the feel for it. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. Thank you. All right, good job.